It is December 14th. Just a little bit after sunrise. And what do we got here? 27 degrees. 27 degrees. I think that's showing pretty good. And I just checked my heat lamps and both of them are operating. So the bike should be able to start. We've got some frost on the ground. Let's get the odometer reading and then we'll get started. Be any problem of it starting up today. Okay, let's see. I don't think I'll need a light. I think you should be able to see that. Oh yeah. Three nine eight five six point eight. Three nine eight five six point eight. My topic for this ride is audio hum. Now back in my day when we set up audio equipment like stereos and speakers and things like that, you were constantly fighting to try to get rid of that 60 hertz hum produced by the power lines. And I imagine in other countries that had 50 hertz power lines, probably the same thing, just a little lower frequency. You're always having to deal with that introduced into your equipment, your speakers, your headphones. And it was rather annoying, especially because of the fact you had tubed equipment back then, which even the tubes themselves sprayed all kinds of radiation at 60 hertz and introduced more hum into your sound. Well, now it's much better with digital recording techniques. It still exists to some extent, but you just, <coughs> excuse me, at such a low level that you can't really detect it. At least most human ears can't detect it anymore. Well, there's something strange about that 60 or 50 hertz hum that you have in the power grid. An audio engineer about 10 years ago named Dr. Grigor, or I don't know if he's a doctor. Yeah, I think he's a doctor. Dr. Grigoris at the University of Colorado, Denver. Now he's the director for the National Center for Media Forensics at the university. He, uh, did recordings of the power grid and the fluctuations of the hum like anything else it's a frequency and it's never exactly the same it always varies a little bit as different people turn on and turn off things the power grids always trying to adjust the frequency to uh, keep it steady and so it varies over time and they found out it varies in random ways and makes patterns <clears throat> well because of these patterns it makes you can actually use a few seconds of the 60 hertz cycling and how it varies to actually tell exactly at what time an audio recording was made. And it doesn't have to be an audio recording that was plugged into the mains. If you are recording something, even with a newer digital recorder, and you're anywhere near an electric grid, or any kind of electricity, which means even the wires running in your wall, your lamps, a plug socket, anything like that, chances are you're going to pick up some level of 60 hertz hum, even if it's nothing that you can hear yourself with your own ears. And in England, in the south part of London, they've been recording their power mains for seven years straight. And as it happens, the whole country of England just has one set of power mains so they don't have to uh, do but just one recording that covers pretty much the whole country <clears throat> and then because of that anybody that makes a sound recording anywhere in England and if you're anywhere near any source of power whatsoever they can take a recording and find out exactly when you made that recording and the other thing about it is they can also figure out if that recording has been altered. In other words, if you splice together sections of a recording to try to make it something other than the exact original recording, then all of a sudden the timestamps from the hum and the power grid don't match up. You've got multiple, uh, they call them profiles. 
and obviously if a recording is made continuous for say 15-20 minutes the profile of your recording matches up exactly with the cycling of the power grid so I'm guessing the only way you could get around this would be you'd have to make your recording somewhere with batteries way away from any source of power grid or lines I mean as you see most of us unless we live way out in rural areas there's you can see there's power lines around here as a matter of fact around my house there's two sets of power lines and transformers within all of them less than a hundred feet of my house so I would say you'd have to come up with some really good shielding to your recording device maybe a wrap it in some kind of aluminum foil or something like that but you'd still have to leave an opening for the sound to be able to get in so I don't know if you could even mask it enough there but evidently <coughs> the 60 hertz can be at such a low audio level and they could still pick it out so I don't know if you could even successfully do that and they used it in a case in England where they were making a bust of illegal arms sales and the defense for the people accused of making the sales claimed that the police had altered the audio recordings and spliced together recordings to make it out of context so it was sent off to their forensic lab in South London to where they had have these continuous recordings of the cycling of the power grid and uh, found out that the recording was not altered in any way it matched up exactly with the profiles of the fluctuations in the power grid so ended up didn't make a good case for the defense they were uh, blown out of the water and they ended up getting convicted and I think one of the guys got like over 30 years time <laughs> I'm just thinking that's kind of unusual something like that that for much of my audio career of setting up sound systems and uh, wanting to get clean recordings something like the 60 cycle hum that I've always had to deal with in different ways and try to get rid of is something that can be used as a perfect timestamp for audio recordings it can also give you an idea if the recording has been altered or not so anyway I thought that was a pretty good development I thought I would share it with everybody I think I'm well past my three minutes and probably knowing me it always tends to come out when I start talking about stuff I hardly ever have a video turn out less than seven minutes or so so I guess I will call it here and then give the last part for the odometer reading when I get back home ending mileage get that glare out of there three nine eight six three point I think that is that a one? I can't tell. Yeah, I think we'll call it three nine eight six three point one.